For me, it was kind of crazy to see the vast disparity between individuals getting the same dose. It's not like they all fall in the middle here. We have some guys that are in the mid 3000s for one shot versus a guy who is barely cracking a thousand. So guys, Derek, moreplace18s.com. Today we're going to be talking about the opposite side of the spectrum. You always hear about the hyper responders. You see the genetic elite bodybuilders on a bodybuilding stage. You see guys who respond disproportionately favorably to androgens. Now, what about the opposite side of the spectrum? What about the guys who are on the bottom of the totem pole in terms of individual response, you know, not just in muscle growth and even representation in serum levels. This is something that we see, you know, rarely, and it's something that is often not talked about, but it is ultimately what dictates individual response to hormones and or like any other drug at the end of the day, you have this spectrum of individual response where you have a lot of individuals in the middle who have an average, you know, whatever metric it is you're using to gauge the effectiveness of the drug. And you have hyper responders who are super, super outliers who have disproportionate amounts of, you know, whatever metric it is you're looking for, you know, increase in lean body mass, increase in whatever it is. And on the bottom of the totem pole, you have individuals who hypo respond. These are the individuals that do not get talked about, but they exist and should be touched on because a lot of people just think, you know, steroids equals surgy constants or steroids equals fucking big Ramy. And so <laughs> it's like, there are individuals, like we did the video recently on the guy who took trend. And I said like realistic, like average response, like realistically, that might've been a hypo response in actual practical application. That guy though, was his diet and training actually on point? Was the sleep on point? You know, doubtful because the guy's, you know, response was not very significant whatsoever. But again, there are individuals who no matter really what they do, they're going to have, you know, you can only take your genetics so far. So that is what we're going to be digging into in this one. This is a study that I found um, credit to uh, Victor Black for finding this one. It is effects of different doses of testosterone on gonadotropins, 25 hydroxy, uh, D, hydroxy vitamin D3 and blood lipids in healthy men. So uh, he presented a chart from this study that I thought was really good to, uh, kind of dig into on, you know, individual, res individual response to different testosterone dosages. So in this study, they have 25 healthy male volunteers aged 27 to 43. They were given 500 milligrams, 250 milligrams, and 125 milligrams of test E as a single dose of testovirin depot. They tested luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, lipids, um, let's see, vitamin D3, um, blah, 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 serum testosterone, P apolipoprotein A1, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, so just basic lipids, basic uh, gonadotropins, serum test levels, vitamin D. So we're analyzed prior to and four and 14 days after dosing. Testosterone and epitestosterone and urine testosterone and epitestosterone ratio were analyzed prior to each dose after a washout period of six to eight weeks. So basically, like, I'll show you the kind of uh, conclusion of the whole, you know, summarizing it, it until we get into like the granular details of the hypo responder. So all doses investigated suppressed gonadotropin concentrations in serum, gonadotropin suppressed, um, LH remained suppressed six weeks after the 500 milligram dose. These results indicate testosterone has a more profound endocrine effect on the HPTA than was previously thought. Now keep in mind, this study is from 2014 and they're you know digging into some basic shit that is a little bit irrelevant to what we're going to be talking about but it's worth noting nonetheless because there's not very many studies done on super physiological doses of androgens there was no alteration in 25 hydroxy vitamin d3 levels after after testosterone administration compared to baseline levels the 250 and 500 milligram doses induced decreased concentrations of apo a1 the uh P apolipoprotein A1 and HDL, whereas, and this is, you know, good cholesterol traditionally seen, whereas the lowest dose, 125 milligrams, did not have any effect on the lipid profile. Conclusion, the single doses of testosterone produced a dose-dependent increase in serum test concentrations together with a suppression of LH and FSH, as you would expect. Alterations in apo A1 and HDL were observed after the two highest single doses. It is possible that long-time abuse of anabolic energetic steroids will lead to alteration in vitamin D status. Knowledge and understanding of the side effects of anabolic energetic steroids are important to the treatment and care of abusers of testosterone. So the reason, like, great, cool. You know, like this is an expected outcome. 
But what was most interesting when you dig into the details of individual dose response is this. All participants had testosterone concentrations in the normal range, 10 to 30 nanomoles per liter before the first dose of 500 milligrams um, of testosterone enanthate. So roughly here, 15.02. The concentration of S testosterone, now keep in mind, 15.02 nanomoles per liter. We're looking at 15.02, we're looking at 433. Okay, so when we see the average, uh, let's see, all participants had normal range before the first dose, roughly this um, as the average. And then we have the reason I have 40 nanomoles per liter in here, I will show you in a sec. But we see here, the concentration of testosterone increased 360% and 39% on days four and 14. So obviously, as you would expect, after you inject a super physiological amount of tests, your testosterone concentrations are gonna spike up and then over the coming days, this is exactly why you don't want to be using your TRT so infrequently you end up with a giant bolus fucking administration where you have super physiological tests going to the sky as well as super physiological 5-alpha reduction into DHT and super physiological <laughs> aromatization into estradiol and then you have this fucking crash until your next shot. You know, this is why by day 14, these people are essentially almost near baseline, which is fucking terrible. Like even though they're on test E, which is seen as, oh, this is such a long ester, like the ester's not that fucking long at the end of the day. Like, yeah, you can get, what it, it's like five days, you know, it depends on where you look for the source or where, you know, what's, what, you know, source is citing the half-life. It varies between sites, but in general, like what you need to know is the more frequent you can administer, the closer you can get to replicating endogenous pulsatile secretions, the more side effect free you will be essentially because you are, kind of not overloading your body with so much burden of androgen that you're getting, you know, super physiological androgenic signaling in your brain and your fucking organs. You're not getting all this extra estrogen and DHT that you otherwise wouldn't get. Rather, you're getting steady, stable levels like this rather than a giant fucking spike and then a giant crash thereafter. So anyways, that's obviously, you know, most of you guys know, like, I'm not saying you have to do everyday administrations either, by the way, I'm just saying like the more, I, the more frequent, the more ideal for the majority of individuals and a lot of guys who need an AI can literally abandon their AI entirely just by moving their administration frequency to a more frequent schedule. So anyways, concentration increased 360%, 39% on days four and 14, respectively after the 500 milligram dose, after the 250 milligram dose and the 125 milligram doses, the increase on day four was 112%, 91.06% respectively, but no increase remained on day 14 after these two doses. Moreover, there was a significant 11% decrease on day 14 after the 125 milligram dose. So here we see the kind of spreadsheet of people in the study here. So notably, this is the 500 milligram bracket. This is the 250 milligram bracket and the 125. So it's separated into days after the shot. So this is right before the first administration. They hit the shot, boom, level spike into the fucking stratosphere all the way up to like we have a ballpark here of, you know, between 60 and 80. Let's say we're at, uh, I don't know, fucking 67 or something. What is that? We're looking at guys hitting at almost 2,000 nanogram per deciliter total T's with a hyper responder up here near fucking 120. This guy is at what? Like 117-ish? One, 117 animals per liter? Boom. This one guy though, all these fucking individuals are kind of in the ballpark of, you know, we've got some like, you know, some 1500s, some 1600s, some 1800s, some 1900s-ish. And then we have at the top here, this one guy who gets a fucking 3,374 nanogram per deciliter total out of one 500 milligram shot. Now, on the opposite side of the spectrum, look at this poor guy down here. On day four, after a 500 milligram test administration, he is at about, if we have 30 nanomoles per liter, what is this? We're looking at like maybe like 35, like about here, I don't know, like maybe like 36-ish. So let's just punch in what, what 40 is first. So we see this cutoff, we have 1,000, fuck, <laughs> 1,000, 153 nanograms per deciliter. So we see this line here at nanomoles per liter. We know this is 1,153 nanograms per deciliter across the board. So we see in the 250 milligram group, the 125 group, how many people are exceeding, essentially pushing into super physiological territory because at the end of the day, like the, the top end of a natural reference range, you know, in general is gonna be 
you know, depending on where you are. If you're in Canada, you know, they pretty much treat everyone like a fucking low T piece of shit. So you're, you're, you know, a, a fucking phenom if you're over like 750 in Canada. But if you're in the US or in, you know, uh, more, uh, I don't know, forgiving labs that are, uh, you know, based on like generous fucking ranges, whereby, you know, actual natural outliers can still fall within, you know, therapeutic, you know, you'll find reference ranges that go up to like 1100, maybe, you know, that's probably like the high end. So let's just say, you know, 40 animals per liter is like right at the fucking cream of the crop, top of natural production, borderline pushing into, you probably have like a fucking pituitary adenoma or, you know, a fucking, I don't know, some sort of weird, like, you know, tumor inducing fucking, you know, gonadotropin pulsing. <laughs> Goddamn, like super physiological thing. Like, remember the guy I told you about who has 1700 nanogram per deciliter total T, who's natural and he has a uh, benign adenoma on his adrenal glands, apparently. Well, that individual is, you know, an example of a guy who, if he did not have that, he would likely be more normal. Like, the likelihood that you would, like, there are. There are like cholesterol hyper responders and there are individuals who have like, you know, adenomas that cause like weird pulsations of hormones and shit. So normal people, like people who don't have like very, very extraordinary conditions are gonna follow like in the spectrum with like the top end of natural production probably being like 1100, almost 40 nanomoles per liter. So let's just like draw an imaginary line here. Everything underneath here is like relatively like you know, justifiably natural as far as serum tea production goes. Now, again, obviously that's not considering, you know, the chronic bleeds you get from, you know, an exogenous source, you know, it's stable in your body, regardless if you had a shitty diet, shitty sleep, whatever it is, it's a stable level. But at the end of the day, we're talking about serum testosterone levels and if they fall within a therapeutic, normal, like natural person range or not, you know, something that justifiably is like replacement. You know, I would, I would assume most people would like qualify TRT is anything that puts your total like within the therapeutic reference range. Now, of course, you know, for guys like me, I would say, look at your free. Is it, you know, disproportionately high and out of, you know, the reference range too? But like in general, like the spectrum and the metrics that people are usually using is total T. Like where's your total T at? You're natural if you're like under a thousand, like it, and you're, it's actual therapeutic replacement. If you're doing like, if you're putting your T at like 800, you know, it's like, it's therapeutic. So anyways, Anything under here is like plausibly natural. So we have individuals who take, you know, 250 milligram shot. We have individuals taking 125. And obviously this is just like, you know, one shot. Obviously there is, you know, steady state concentrations that are reached after five half lives. There is, you know, accumulation buildup here, but we see a guy doing a 500 milligram shot of test. And we see underneath here, a couple individuals who have such hypo response to this administration despite the massive dosage that they're yielding what appears to be a fucking like barely cracking a thousand nanogram per deciliter total like using a dosage that you would otherwise be like okay you naturally produce three to ten milligrams a day off the top of my head three to ten milligrams a day of natural production is actual endogenous reference you know an, an endogenous reference range essentially of what you can naturally produce out of your goddamn balls. So seven days a week, you know, you're at best producing 70 milligrams as a peak hyper elite natural who does not have some weird, like, you know, genetic outlying condition. So if we have a guy who is taking 500 milligrams of test and he's barely cracking a thousand, like does this individual, you know, is he going to be able to get away with a TRT of, you know, 125 milligrams? Is he going to be able to get away with a TRT of, you know, 100? For him is a cycle, you know, at 200 milligrams. And I often, you know, when we talk about TRT in general, when people are like, oh, my TRT is 250. It's like, well, you're like, that's a cycle, bro. That's not actually TRT. Like you're actually like on a fucking, you know, shit ton of gear right now. Dose is the poison. And the dose response is also something that needs to be taken into account because individuals like this, Maybe those individuals plausibly actually need, you know, 300 milligrams just to achieve natural looking level slash symptom relief. Now this is 500. We have not seen accumulation yet. This is the first dosage, but this individual is using 500 migs. Like that's a fucking shit ton and only reaching here. 
you know, I'm, I'm not really sure where he'd fall if he was on like 150, but I would speculate it would probably be like relatively inadequate for a guy who's trying to optimize his hormonal state. And it's just interesting because again, we only hear of individuals who are, you know, hyper responders or we look at, you know, what is the, the probable outcome? Like what is the, you know, the cycle you should be doing? What dosage should be, you, you should be using. And I've talked about, you know, the guys who get away with like super low fucking gear, guys like James English, I did the 180 milligram video 180 milligram video recently where we talked about his uh, very minimal hormone use and the massive results he's getting off of literally less androgen exposure than a fucking, you know, most guys TRT or a lot of guys TRT, you know, if you consider 180 milligrams TRT a cycle again, it's sort of relevant to this video. But then there are some individuals who literally need over 200 milligrams just to achieve like therapeutic replacement and symptom relief. Now, I'm not saying this guy's not going to get results above and beyond a natural. I'm not saying this isn't the equivalent of a guy who's enhanced because at the end of the day, again, no dips in his fucking production, no anything. It's just a stable bleed of 1,038 nanogram per deciliter or whatever it is. He's obviously gonna, you know, gain muscle, gain strength, have significant advantage over being natural. But at the end of the day, you have individuals up fucking here using the same dose. We have a guy literally producing in the mid 3000s using the same administration, the same gear, the same everything, as this guy down here who's barely cracking a thousand. So like this is the kind of shit you have to think about when it comes to dose response and when you're trying to f extrapolate and think like what is the best dose for like fill in the blank individual, it's not always just 500 milligrams to take your test and shut the fuck up. It's not always, oh, you start at the low end and you have to titrate up accordingly and this is like the, the arbitrary starting point that you need to start at. Like that strategy, in my opinion, is ideal for assessing dose response, you know, starting at a reasonable amount and titrating up accordingly so you can kind of assess where you land in this spectrum. But at the end of the day, these dosages are all just arbitrary numbers based on, you know, extrapolated like anecdotal findings and averaging shit. And you could have an individual that realistically is like, you know, barely hitting therapeutic replacement on, you know, 150 milligrams, 200 milligrams. So does that, can that individual get away with blasting and getting blast results off of 180 milligrams when he's down here on 500, like, you know, obviously serum testosterone does not exactly equate to muscle growth or strength, but it is a, you know, proxy for seeing like some sort of response to what you're using, you know? If you can only fucking yield this much hormone out of what you're injecting, you know, there's, there's something to be said about that, you know? So this is sort of a video just kind of touching on the two hyper extreme sides of the spectrum. Like we hear about individuals who are, you know, crazy fucking responders. And again, this guy doesn't mean he's going to be more jacked than all of these guys down here. It just means he's a hyper responder to this fucking administration in the serum. And this individual is fucking terrible at, you know, getting the testosterone and like freely circulating in the system. Um, so at the end of the day, the thing you have to consider is this is all very like experimental shit. It's not like anyone can tell you, you need to take this dose because this is the arbitrary amount that works for everyone. You know, there are certain guidelines that are like reasonable assumptions to think that the majority of people will, you know, do very well with, but you could very well be this guy down here, or you could very well be this guy up here. And ultimately it's up to you to figure that out and titrate accordingly. And that is where, you know, a reasonable introductory point that is, you know, well tolerated by more individuals than a higher amount necessarily and titrating up accordingly based on your individual dose response and what you need is ultimately what should dictate your decisions rather than arbitrary numbers thrown around on forums and shit so hopefully that was insightful hopefully it was interesting like for me it was kind of crazy to see the vast disparity between individuals getting the same dose it's not like they all fall in the middle here we have some guys that are in the mid 3000s for one shot versus a guy who is barely cracking a thousand like barely fucking cracking like natural numbers on paper. Obviously his free is probably out of range, but anyways, you get the idea. There is a vast fucking difference between how the same gear, the same dosage, the same fucking source, the same everything is going to affect individuals differently. So keep that in mind when it comes to your, your own individual endeavor. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com, follow me on Instagram, and moreplacemoredates, Facebook, Snapchat, <laughs> bit shoot, not bit shoot. Twitter, TikTok, Apple po Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below my TRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. Get high quality oversight from doctors who understand shit like this, which is something that no HRT clinics 
no, like how many HRT clinics know anything above and beyond the cookie cutter, here's your test, HCG and estrozole? Not many, surprisingly, you know? There's very few people slash clinics out there putting forth high quality information with cutting edge, you know, info on things like, you know, testosterone to estradiol ratios, you know, managing lipid profiles, CBC, metabolic parameters, thyroid, you know, it's, this is shit that you think would be basic and understood by people who are prescribing hormones, but often the case it's not, you know, it's often the case that those individuals are spending more time filling scripts to make a markup of medications than they are actually educating themselves slash educating the patients, unfortunately. And that is why we focus on making our money on the consultations rather than on the medications. So if you guys want high quality oversight by doctors who know their shit, check it out. It is in the video description below, as well as my recommended lab tests and diagnostics. We have the best lab builder you can use to get high quality assays that are actually accurate for guys who are using anabolics or those who are just on HRT or whatever. Even if you're just a natural using high sensitivity testing like LCMS, um, instead of, you know, Roche ECLIA for different methodologies for assessing your hormonal panel accurately and not having vast aberrations and shit based on cross detections and other bullshit that causes, you know, totally inaccurate blood work. Like how many times have we seen now guys who will get, like I've literally seen my own blood taken and used on two different assays, one being high sensitivity and one being an amino assay and getting a fucking, you know, totally different reading on one end of the re reference range and one on the bottom. So it's very important that you get high quality, high sensitivity testing. That is what we not only prioritize, but above and beyond that, having all the biomarkers in question, we think give a comprehensive deep dive into your health and no other, you know, lab company is offering the panels we do at the prices we do, you know, they're expensive as fuck, but at the end of the day, the type of shit we are providing in the panels, no one is matching what we're doing. And as well as adding the customization options we have in our lab builder, nobody's matching that shit either with the high quality testing. Like, like how many companies have equilibrium ultrafiltration or equilibrium dialysis for, you know, free testosterone? None. They're using like fucking free direct and shit like that to show you what your free test levels are and making you try to extrapolate the fuck out of shit when you're comparing it to your total T. Like this is stuff that um, I've made content about before and I made sure we prioritize in our clinic to make sure we provide the options for all of the most accurate testing and people who actually know how to understand the fucking test and interpret it for you. So again, all in the video description below as well as Gorilla Mind, Nootropic Formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas, I design myself from scratch, I'm clothing, you know, I'm associated with, you know, shirts I wear in my videos, anything else, uh, recommended diet model for gaining muscle, strength, sports performance, um, hitting your micronutrients, staying healthy, as well as, you know, making sure your testosterone production naturally is maxed out before you haphazardly jump on TRT. That diet model will backfill all your requirements and anything else I'm associated with it is all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.